Welcome. In this Soundation tutorial, I'll give you an overview of the studio and how to navigate through it. If there's something you don't understand, don't worry. We have other tutorials that go more in depth on certain topics. When you create your first project, the studio will open up and look something like this. You might be greeted with these get started guides that can walk you through specific tasks. You can click on the arrow in the corner to minimize the guides. And you can click on get started here in the bottom bar to open them again. Let's move to the side panel on the right. Each one of these icons opens a different tab. Up top is the sound library. Then we have projects, export, help, settings, and MIDI mapping. Down here you can go to full screen and close and open the side panel. But you'll probably spend most of your time in the sound library. This is where you can get all the content for building songs like audio samples, instrument presets, beats, and MIDI melodies and chords. Just click on these categories and drag in the content you want out to what we call the arrangement area here. I'll drag in an audio loop just so we have something to demonstrate later. You can also drag in content from your computer's file manager the same way or by clicking on import here. When you've dragged something in, a channel is automatically created for you. You can think of a channel as the container for the content, which in this case is this audio loop. You can also create empty channels by clicking on Add Channel and choosing between Beatmaker, Audio, Instrument, and Effect Channels. These are different types of channels for different types of content. On each channel, you can control the volume, pan, solo, mute, and automation for everything on the channel. You can think of the channels as different layers of the song. You might have one channel for the drums, one channel for the bass, one for the piano, and so on. On the Beatmaker and Instrument channels, you can double-click to create clips. Also, double-click on the clips to open them up. Then you can add and edit notes. You can also click on the icon of any channel to open the bottom panel, where you can add audio effects to shape the sound. If you go to an instrument channel, you'll also see the instrument here which you can open up and change. Then you can close the bottom panel by clicking this arrow on the right and open it again the same way. These handles will let you zoom in and out horizontally and vertically. And you can use these scroll bars to move around. Let's check out this top bar now. Here on the left, you can see the Soundation logo. If you click on it, you'll go back to the dashboard. These arrows are the undo and redo buttons if you make mistakes. Next up we have some tools to handle the clips in the arrangement area. The pointer tool can move and trim the clips. The scissor tool can cut the clips. And the stretch tool can stretch the clips to make them faster or slower. Time stretch will keep the key of the clip, while pitch stretch will change the key along with the stretch. Then we come to the transport section. Click play to start playing the project. This thing is called the playhead. You can see the playhead moving as it plays. Then to stop the playback, simply click the stop button. Since you'll play and stop a lot, I recommend using the space bar to play and pressing it again to stop. It's one of the studio's many keyboard shortcuts that you can use for a faster workflow. If you wanted to start playing at a different time, you can click and drag the playhead to wherever you want. You can see the stop button has then changed to a rewind button, which will move the playhead to the beginning. Then there's the record button, which you can use to record audio or MIDI. So make sure you have an audio channel or an instrument channel selected. Then you can record. Next up is the loop region. As I activate it, you can see this becomes yellow. This will loop the playback. When the playback reaches the end, it will automatically start from the beginning of this loop again. You can resize this loop by dragging the sides. And you can move it by dragging the middle. You can also activate and deactivate it by clicking directly on it. The next button is the metronome. 
With it on, you'll hear a click during playback and recording. This is so you can hear the tempo of the song. Then we have the virtual keyboard button. Click on it and this keyboard will pop up. You can only use this with an instrument channel, so ensure you have one selected. You can see it's an instrument channel by the icon, by the way. Then you can click on it or play with your computer's keyboard. You can also connect the MIDI controller to your computer and control the virtual instruments that way. Over here is the display. It will basically show you where the playhead is. Right now, it shows bars and beats, which are musical measurements. You can see that it corresponds to this ruler. It's at bar 5. If you click on the display, it will show the time instead. Now it's at 10 seconds. This shows the tempo of the project, which is measured in beats per minute, or BPM. The higher the number, the faster the tempo. The metronome is on so we can hear the tempo. You can change the tempo by dragging it up and down, or by typing in the exact tempo and then pressing Enter. You can also tap in the tempo by holding Control or Command and clicking on it repeatedly. Then we have the time signature, which is in 4-4 right now. This is by far the most common time signature, so you probably won't have to change it. But you can type in a different one if you want. Here you can see the name of the project. This is a new project, so it's untitled. Let's give it a name. Click on it and type something in here. Then click Done. If you want to share your project or collaborate, you can click the Share button. Here you can invite or enable links to send to people. And if you want to export your project, just click Export and choose the file type you want. If you're on the free plan, some options will be locked like this and you can upgrade to unlock them. And depending on what plan you're on, you may also see an upgrade button here. We can continue checking out the rest of this bottom bar. The left part of the bottom bar can be very useful while learning the studio. It's blank right now, but notice when I hover the cursor over different parts of the studio, you get a message telling you the function and potentially the keyboard shortcut for it. So if you don't remember what something in the studio does, you can check there. Next, we can see that it says All Changes Saved. Everything you do in Soundation is automatically saved as long as you're connected to the internet, so you don't have to worry about forgetting. You can check here to make sure that it's saved. The status will change if you're in the middle of changing something or uploading files. If you've lost your internet connection, this will say Offline instead. Then we have the CPU and Memory Meters. Most of the time you don't have to think about these, but if you notice that the studio is lagging or the sound is glitching, you can check the status of these two to see what could be wrong. And that's it for this video. See you in the next one.